So there's a whole network of scammers out there that are secretly laundering money from the United States to India, and today I'm going to expose their tactics by sending one of them a package of cash with an air tag hidden in the box. And the way I'm going to find one of these scammers is by going into their secret telegram group where these guys are trying to sell their services to each other. For example, Sam Williams here will sell you a toll-free number where you can take calls from your victims. He'll even spoof a number for you so it looks like you're calling from Amazon or the IRS. Thank you for calling Amazon customer support. There's all kinds of goodies that you could buy here, but the service that I'm interested in is Cash Pickup, because these type of scammers specialize in sending stolen money overseas in ways that it can't be tracked by authorities. And this is the most important part of scamming, because convincing an old grandma that she owes back taxes is easy. But getting that money out of the country without the authorities knowing is a little tricky. So I message this Diraj guy on his Telegram account pretending to be a fellow scammer. I say, I need a cash pickup. Can you please help or no? Get back to me ASAP. I have the customer on hold. Now this is a lie that I've made up to get his attention, but if he thinks that I've got money coming in, he's gonna want a slice of that pie. So D responds and says yes. And then he tries to call me but I can't pull off being an Indian scammer on the phone, so I just act like there's a bad connection and I play stupid. He says he can't hear me and he asks for the amount that I need picked up. And I say 23,000. And the only way that I'm able to communicate here is through Google Translate, because I don't know Hindi. Then he says we can do it tonight and he asks if I can hold the customer. Yes, I think I can hold the customer, considering I am the customer. So I tell him I need an address and he asks if I'm sending a box and if it will have cash. This is typically how scammers get their victims to send cash. They want them to hide it because you can't ship currency. But scammers convince their victims that this is the fastest way to resolve whatever kind of trouble they've made them believe that they're in. And usually the cash is shipped to somewhere in the United States to a mule who then transfers that money to India. And that's why I want an address so I can see who's all involved. So I say yes, the victim will ship the cash. And then he gives me his rate. He wants 25% of the 23,000 and he says he's going to split it between him and his receiver. That's kind of a lot of money just to pick up a box of cash, but who else are you going to get to illegally launder money for you? They gotta make it worth the risk and their time. So this Diraj guy starts bragging about how good him and his mule are. He even shows me a transaction from that week where he successfully moved $9,000. But we're gonna see how smart he is when I send him on a wild goose chase. He now wants to call and explain everything, and I can't do this without blowing my cover. So I need to bring in one of my team members who does speak Hindi. And I provide him with his WhatsApp number, and eventually D reaches out to my friend, which is really stupid on his part. Why would you message a total stranger with your personal WhatsApp number to talk about illegal stuff that you're doing? Now I have all of his embarrassing personal pictures. Also, who takes a picture of themselves in the bathtub? But eventually he calls and he proceeds to give instructions to my guy on how to package the cash. And he says that the customer needs to stick the cash inside of a book because it's critical that nobody will suspect that there's money inside. Payment ko book mein dalna. Book kar aap is tarike se karna ki usme se paise paise bahar dikhe nahi. Okay, now he wants it bubble wrapped. Usme dal kar bubble wrap karke. Now he's saying to throw some chocolate in there to make it look even more inconspicuous. Uske upar ek chocolate ka box rakhna. Okay, so $23,000 isn't enough. He needs some chocolate too. But before he will give me the address, he wants to know that I'm serious. And to prove it, he needs a video of my victim packaging the money. Well, now how the heck am I gonna do that? I guess I've gotta order some more fake money from Amazon and film myself playing the role of a clueless old man. So I find an old dress shirt and I sit down at my kitchen table and I film myself with my phone. And he asks that the cash be hidden in a book, so I'm gonna hide it in this book called The Everyday Guide to the Bible, because these criminals could probably use a little Jesus in their life. Then I'm going to wrap it up like a Christmas present, and then I'm gonna wrap it again in bubble wrap so nobody from UPS or law enforcement will find my fake cash. Then I go back and I look at what I filmed, but I don't know if I'm convinced. For one, the picture quality is just too good. Surely an old guy would be using a much older phone. So I export the video to be like one eighth of the resolution and it's starting to look a little better, but it still needs something. I got it. I download a Fox News clip and I add it to make it seem as if the victim has the news playing in the background. Both Biden and Trump are the current front runner. So I, how do we make sense of that? It's perfect. So then I send the video over and apparently it's good enough because I then get the address to his mule in the States. You did it! Now I know that this seems crazy, but this kind of thing is happening every day. And last year there was $6.9 billion lost to cyber fraud. And one way to not fall into traps like this is by protecting yourself with Aura. 
today's sponsor. Aura protects what's important in an all-in-one app. Aura will alert you in minutes if your credit card has been compromised or if someone is trying to use your personal information to take out a loan. They'll send you alerts fast right to your phone so you can take care of it right away. Data breaches are happening all the time, and I bet that you have sensitive information floating around on the dark web right now. If you sign up with Aura, they'll tell you what's out there and even help you get it removed. There's a victim of identity theft every six seconds, and when you sign up with Aura, you get $1 million in insurance to cover any eligible losses. You're also getting a password manager, a VPN, and an antivirus all in a single app. As technology grows more complex and advanced, so do scams, cyber criminals, and fraudsters. And that's why it's time to rethink how you keep your family's information safe and secure online. You can try Aura for free for 14 days by going to aura.com slash pleasant green. Go see what information of yours is floating around on the dark web and let Aura help you remove it today. So I sent him a message telling him not to let me down. And then he starts to brag again. He tells me not to worry and he talks about how much he's making from scamming and how this mule is the real deal. Well, we'll see how smart this mule is when I hide an air tag in the box and expose his whole operation. And on my way to ship the package, I guess I need to stop and get a chocolate bar to include. And then I'm off to the UPS store and for the sender's name, I just put the classic Ben Dover and I pick a random apartment complex. Then I send the tracking slip to the scammer so he can update his mule. And then I watched as the AirTag made its way across the country to its final destination. Now the way that these AirTags work is they emit a Bluetooth signal that can be detected by other iPhones. And that signal is then uploaded to Apple's Find My network so you can see where the AirTag was last seen. So for me to get real-time tracking, we need this package to be near a bunch of iPhones. And lucky for me, this cash mule is living in none other than iPhone headquarters Cupertino, California. And I can see the delivery truck driving around and I know the address where it's going to, which looks like a nice place right next to Apple headquarters. What's a scammer doing living in such a nice place? Oh wait, he's not. It's currently vacant and up for rent according to Zillow, which means that the scammer in India is having me ship the package to a vacant address in California where there won't be anyone home to pick it up. The driver is just gonna drop it off at an empty house and this mule will swoop right in and grab it and nobody will be able to tie any lost money to this mule because the address isn't associated with him. It's pretty clever. Well, finally the truck is in the neighborhood and the package shows as being delivered. And we make sure to let D in India know so he can inform his mule. But the mule must have already been parked outside waiting because within minutes, it was on the move again. And I began to watch as it makes its way through the streets of Cupertino. He goes to a gas station, then the freeway. Where was he going? The AirTag continued to update and I am glued to my screen. Here's an actual photograph of me and my team following its progress. Eventually he takes an exit and ends up at a park where he stays for almost 30 minutes. What's going on at the park? Eventually I looked at a satellite view and I realized that the package has been tossed in the dumpster. What? Could he have noticed the AirTag? How would he have found it? But then I thought, if he has an iPhone, he probably got a notification like this. Well, I guess that was a pretty boneheaded move on my part. He was probably heading home and then he got the notification and then he pulled off and he tossed the package because he knew it was being tracked. But did he keep the cash? Soon enough, I got my answer because the mule sent a video to D who then sent it to us. And here it is. First of all, how's he getting this angle? Does he have like an attachment on his sunroof? He must do this kind of thing a lot. Anyway, he opens the package and you can tell that it hasn't been tampered with because my bubble wrap and wrapping paper are still intact. And I think almost immediately he can tell that this isn't real cash by the way he reacts when he touches it. But he's counting it anyway. He knows that this is fake and he knows he has to send a video back to his boss to report back, but you gotta wonder what's going through his head right now. Because eventually D writes to us freaking out and going off on how the money is fake. He even ends up calling to ask what's going on, but my guy accuses him of lying and eventually just hangs up on him. Which just frustrates him even more because he doesn't want to be labeled as a thief. So he starts sending images that show the same number on every single bill and he wants us to confront the customer. <laughs> There's just something really satisfying knowing that he was expecting this big payday for almost a week and now is only finding some toy money and a melted candy bar. So I had my guy write back and say, that chocolate bar was for me. I called the customer and he said, return his chocolate bar back. And Dee's like, but did you ask about the fake cash? What's the deal? 
I don't know what he's so mad about. He just got a free chocolate bar. He goes on to say that the proof is in front of you. And the last thing that he wants is to develop a reputation as a cheater in the scam world. Cause what are the guys in that secret group gonna think if I accuse him of being a backstabber? It's like getting a one star review. So he goes on to try to mend the relationship. He says, you are my India brother. <laughs> right. And he even says, come to Noida and check out my center. I want to end this on a good note. <laughs> well, who would have expected that this whole experience would have brought us closer together? And I guess that I can call him out, but I'm just gonna let him sit and wonder what the crap just happened and who's been wasting his time. Because I think I wanna try it again since we're such good pals. So tell me viewers, should we try it again? And what should we send him next time? Cause the more time and gas of theirs that I can waste, the better we're all off. So let me know in the comments below. And if anyone's in Cupertino and able to do some dumpster diving, I could really use that AirTag back. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.